Well, if you're awake, say amen. amen. If you're asleep, stand up. <laughs> All right. <laughs> we'll just let you stand the whole service just to make sure you stay awake. Well, we're glad that you're here in the house of the Lord on this Wednesday night. And uh, glad to, boy, all of these burgundy shirts, that just looks really nice. I didn't wear mine tonight. I didn't get the memo, but anyway, welcome. So glad each of you are here. So good to have the Stetlers back. And I always, always miss them when they're gone. I'm so grateful they've had the opportunity to minister this summer. They've got one more camp, but uh, we are grateful that they're here tonight, and uh, we welcome them here. So good to have Rejoice, is that right? Rejoice from Allegheny Wesleyan College here. And uh, Brother Sanders is their representative, and so glad that they're here tonight. Just trusting the Lord to help us in this time together. And the Lord, the Lord observed you coming into the sanctuary tonight. He knows your needs, He knows your concerns, He knows everything that you brought into the service with you tonight. And he is here to give us special help and strength tonight. And so I want us just from the outset of this service to tune our ears to his voice. And as songs are sung and testimonies are given and prayer is offered up to the Lord, let's just keep our ear tuned to what he has to say to us. And I believe we can leave tonight after the service having heard from the Holy Spirit in our walk with the Lord. So I encourage you to do that tonight. Well, Brother Stetler is going to do prayer time in just a moment, so let me make this announcement. At the very beginning, I want us to have about six testimonies tonight. We're not going to have a bunch of time because we want to give AWC plenty of time to give their, their presentation of music and so forth, but I just want you to know I want six testimonies, all right? Two children, two young teenagers, and then two adults. That's, that's what I'm hoping for, all right? If we have a little bit more, that's all right if you're keeping it short. But I just want to make you aware of that. Let's bow our heads. Let's invite the presence. Father, we ask for your special help in this service tonight. You see each and every one of us that have gathered in. You know the week we've had, the day we've had, difficulties, struggles, all of the things that, that uh, just make up the realities and dynamics of our life. We brought all of that in, and you observed that, and you know exactly what we need tonight. And so, Lord, we just commit ourselves to you tonight. Accept our worship. May everything that is said and done honor and glorify you tonight, and we'll certainly give you praise in Jesus' precious name. Amen. We're going to sing together, but it's also good to have Tracy Hayes' mother here. Welcome. So glad that she's here in the service as well. Let's sing together as Brother Arinder comes to lead us. Number 129, 129. I didn't know if I was supposed to lead tonight. I thought maybe one of the group would take on that responsibility. But uh, right before I came up here, Brother Witt assured me that if um, I was leading, that he would be sure to lean way forward so that I would let everyone sit down. If you don't know what that means, you can talk to him about it after the service. But anyway, I'll let you remain seated if you sing well. Number 129. Since sin's darkest night, I was wandering alone, a stranger to mercy I stood. But the Savior came by when he heard my faith cry, and he put my sins under the blood. They are covered by the blood, they are covered by the blood, my sins are all covered. 
stand up when he said, if you're sleepy, you stand up. <laughs> and then he said, it's going to make you stand the whole service. So I was glad I didn't stand up. <laughs> we, uh, we just came through 14 days of camp meetings. And that's two camps uh, back to back and uh, about 1,600 miles since we left. And, uh, and then uh, we had slept in camp meeting diggings for uh, 14 days. <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with camp meeting accommodations. We, we're fine with that. But after 14 days of it, you know, the first, first week we slept in a, in a full-size bed. We're used to a king. And Virginia and I about kicked each other to death. <laughs> But after 14 days of it, we said, we're going to sleep in our own bed tonight. So we left Sunday night after church and got home about 2.30 Monday morning. And I only told you all that to tell you old people can't do that. <laughs> and you know better than that. So. <laughs> oh, my. But we're awful, awfully happy to be back home for a little while. <clears throat> We've got one more can as Andy mentioned. Well, we want to pray together. And uh, Brother Steve Smith, would you lead us in prayer time? Let me mention several requests. There are several uh, requests that we really need to be praying for, and some of these you may know. But uh, David Mann lost his job, and we want to pray for David Mann. He's been out of work for some time and uh, just became aware of that just in the last little while. But we want to remember David as we pray. Uh, his sister Trish. Tricia has only been here a few times, but she's struggling and uh, in the hospital right now, having anxiety and a lot of issues that uh, she's trying to get on top of. And she gave us permission to ask you to pray for her. So uh, would you help us pray for Tricia? She's only been here a time or two, but uh, with the mans, but, uh, but we want to pray for Tricia and ask God to touch her yes. and, uh, and help her. Uh, David Lawson, <clears throat> Virginia, you talked to Betty, give us just doing, doing well. And I know Dell put on, uh, or said to Andy, I think, in, in a conversation, he said, God's people's prayers have reached heaven for David. <laughs> and I'm very grateful. We prayed for David for quite a while. Had a very serious surgery, was in intensive care, and on a ventilator when he came out of surgery, it took a lot longer than they thought. And uh, But he is recovering well. Dell and Betty need your prayers. They were home last night and were back up there today and are coming home tonight, I think right now. And uh, But it's really, really wearing them down. So Dell and Betty need your prayer. Just had a good visit with Brother Sankey. He is home from the hospital and uh, still uh, <clears throat> very, very grateful. I, I ought to give, give the praise part of it first. Uh, he has waited just a little too long to go to the hospital several times the last several spells he's had. And uh, this time he woke up Sunday morning and said, I, I, in fact, he was on the side of the bed when Sister Sankey woke up and had been there for a while, couldn't breathe. And he said, I think I need to go to the hospital. So he did, and they kept him overnight and put him on steroids again. And he is improved uh, from, from that, but he's still quite short of breath. And, and uh, so let's remember Brother and Sister Sankey and, uh, you know, I, I just have to tell you, they're taking it like, they're taking it like true saints. And I mean that sincerely. And uh, it's, a, it's a difficult, no question about a difficult one. But God is with them. And I'm so grateful for that example to me personally and, and to all of us. But they do need our prayers. Krista Wilmhoff, uh, yesterday I texted Krista and Ralph both, but didn't get an answer back before church. But uh, she is, has been flat of her back with uh, back problems, severe pain, severe pain. And uh, yesterday she had a doctor's appointment and Ralph said they were giving her new medicine and he was in hopes that it would help. But uh, <clears throat> let's remember Krista and Ralph. And then Rachel Byer, this is Sister Byer's daughter-in-law, uh, had served her cancer surgery and they uh, are awaiting, I guess, further uh, results is that still where it stands, Sister Byer? And uh, but but she needs our prayers. Yes. Yes. Need our prayers. 
course, this would be uh, Dorcas's si uh, sister in law. All right, do you have other prayer requests that you would like to mention? Tim? Pam and I were in the, uh, the ER this morning for several hours, and um, she was experiencing some severe abdominal pain. And it looks as if she's going to be needing surgery to remove her gallbladder. So that's coming up pretty soon. Let's certainly remember Pam and uh, ask the Lord to give special help. All right. Yes. Jerry's sister Patty, a lot of physical issues, and, and uh, let's just ask God to be very near to that. Touch him. All right. All right. Maybe an unspoken request. All right. Many of those across the congregation. Let's stand together as we pray. Steve, lead us. Let's lift our hearts and join him together tonight as he leads us in prayer. Father, so show us your presence tonight. Yes, yes. Oh God, oh God, we trust you tonight. Amen. Oh Jesus. God. 
should have mentioned at least, uh, or at least one request I wanted to add to a couple, a couple requests. We should have mentioned we want to remember Allegheny Wesleyan College. That the Lord would continue to bless that school and continue to help it to fulfill its God-given mission. Amen. Supply all of their needs. So let's pray for uh, AWC and Sanders. This group as they're finishing up their summer travels. Let's pray for them. I also would mention a young lady, a middle-aged lady, maybe I should say, by the name of Pam. My wife and I were there to visit uh, Tricia in the hospital, uh, a professional. Somebody had to be in the same room with us as we were as we were visiting. And as we interacted with, with Tricia and had prayer with her, then as we were leaving, uh, this lady named Pam told us that, uh, that she was getting emotional as she sat over there thinking about our conversation with Tricia. And she's going through some deep waters as well. Her daughter's boyfriend committed suicide a couple of weeks ago. And so I want you to help us pray for Pam as well. I told her we're, we're here for her as well. If, if she would need it, she lives out in Alexandria, so it's a little different direction than, than uh, where we are. But I want you to help me pray for Pam as well. And I know that would be a great blessing. Well, I mentioned it's about six testimonies. And so I wanted to do those right now. I need two kids, two teenagers, and two adults. And I've got a bunch of kids. And that's wonderful. That is just wonderful. All right, so let's start right on the front row. And we're going to start with Aiden. Hey, man, good. Marshall? Hey, man, Wilson? Hey, man, Patty? Praise the Lord. Carrie? Amen. All right. We're going back to the harms row. All right. Just start right over here with Stuart. Amen. And I'm not even going to say what name that is because I don't have a clue. All right. All right. Amen. All right. Go right ahead, buddy. Amen. All right. Am I missing anybody on that row? All right. We'll go to the next one. Fire row or pallet row. Amen. So, amen. Good. Wonderful. Excellent testimonies. All right. Boy, that was great. All right. How many kids over here want to testify? Anybody? Right ahead. Amen. Me too. Praise God. All right. We go ahead, Alexa. Amen. Praise the Lord. Wonderful. All right, that's that's one of the teenagers. All right, who's the second teenager going to testify? Anybody? Quickly. I gave you plenty of warning. Go right ahead, Carrie. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise God. All right. Somebody. 
everybody double down yes. and they're just not going to give up and they're just not giving in and they're yes. not going to turn around. Yes. Their the face is set and I am so thankful when I see that happen. I just want to egg it on Praise and just the Lord. holler yes. like I yes. would in the, in the tug of war and say don't give up. Amen. Keep on going. And I know that the encouragement of other people does help. God makes all the difference. But it does help. I would see that tug of war thing literally move at once when there was like 50 kids on there. You see it. When someone was really cheering on one strong boy, the whole line would move. And it was just powerful to say, you know, that really helped that boy. Somebody got in there in his in his face, so to speak, and said, don't you dare give up. Amen. And I know it works that way spiritually too, and I want to do my part to egg these kids on, these young people on. Amen. And yes. say, we're not going to do that now. Yeah, that's right. There's a great cloud of witnesses that's cheering us on. Someone had a homespun illustration for the doctrine of election and uh, said, well, the devil voted one direction, and God voted the other direction, and I cast the deciding vote. And uh, each one of us have that choice. We have that choice. And for then those to come alongside of us and encourage us along the way, oh, it's a beautiful thing. Amen. All right. Tyler? I'd like to stand and say I'm glad for this old-fashioned way. I'm glad yes. for the blood. I'm glad for Jesus and what he means to me. And I'm going to go all the way through with him. Amen. Amen. Praise Amen. God. Tyler. Praise the Lord. Well, I think we've reached our quota. Anybody else want to give God praise? I do. Yes. Go right I ahead. think I can live another day now that I'm back with my people and I can really <laughs> The artist was trying to depict of that first, the first glance in heaven. Has anybody seen that lately? Just the, the first day in heaven, is that what it is? And it's just beautiful seeing children running, reaching for somebody. And, and uh, oh, what a day heaven is Amen. going to be. What a place and what a day it's going to be with me. That's exactly right. Praise the Lord. All right. Anybody else? I don't want you to go home defeated. Anybody else have a testimony in your heart that you'd like to give to them? Right here. Let's take it right here. Amen. Amen. Thank you for that Amen. testimony, Alyssa. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Well, thank you for your testimonies tonight. Let me mention just a couple of announcements. And don't forget, tonight following the service is a fundraiser for the youth department. A lot of exciting things out there. And uh, you're not going to want to miss that. And so just spend all your money. All right. Cash. They'll take cash app. Uh, they'll take check, I'm sure. Uh, just spend all of your money. And uh, that is going towards their youth trip that will be happening a week from this weekend. And go 
going to Branson, Missouri. And, uh, and so that is, uh, someone has donated money back in January uh, for the youth department. And so we are using some of that money for this trip, but there is going to be a little bit of a, a balance remaining. And so they're doing this fundraiser to help kind of make up the difference, to make this a free trip for all of our young people to go to Branson. And so if you can help out with that, I know that will be a great blessing. I don't even know for sure how they're doing it. First, I thought they were going to be charging for this stuff, but it might just be donation based. So whatever they tell you out there, that's the way they're doing it and encourage you to support that. Then regular service times on Sunday, encourage you to be here for Sunday. And then, of course, next Sunday night will be our final service of our camp meeting style themed services Sunday nights in July where the Rollin Mitchell will be here sharing in ministry. We're looking forward to his ministry. So keep those things in mind. All right. Oh, one other thing I want to mention. Uh, we want to do something special for the Mann family. Uh, Brother Stetler mentioned that uh, David had lost his job and it was some sort of employment issue where the uh, and I don't need to get into all the details, but evidently the boss was just really, really difficult to, to work for or get along with or something. And anyway, so uh, just created a little bit of an employment issue, and uh, so he's going to have to find another job. And uh, and so I think I think a, uh, a small food pounding, and when I say small, I'm not meaning that uh, it has to be small, but I'm just thinking maybe two items from your pantry. Something like that that you could bring, or maybe if you wanted to go out and purchase a couple things, if you could bring that Sunday, um, I think that would be a great blessing to them. With him not having a job, you're relying on her income uh, solely at this point. Um, I say so. I don't know if he's on unemployment. I don't know the answer to that. But anyway, so they are they are struggling, and so I think if we as a church would come together and be a blessing to them during this time, I'll do my best to send out a notification sometime this weekend to remind you uh, but if you could bring a couple items from your, from your pantry and, uh, and, uh, and bring things that you like. Don't, don't just get rid of the stuff in the pantry you don't like. Because right? they probably don't like what you don't like either. <clears throat> bring something that, uh, that would be a blessing to them and, and I know the Lord will bless you for that as well. It's a real joy to have AWC here with us. And uh, we're looking forward to their music ministry. So we're going to turn it over to Rejoice. Let's worship with them as they sing. And uh, as the music, as the, the lyrics are, are sung, let's just allow some of those lyrics to, to enter through our ears, but lodge in our hearts. Allow them to encourage us as we worship the Lord together. God bless Rejoice as they come and minister at this time. and mercy because you are worthy. 
certainly that is our desire this evening, that every song sung, every testimony given would just be a reflection of his goodness and give him all the glory. It's great to be here this evening. We are Rejoice from Allegheny Wesleyan College. My name is Kaylin Hollabaugh. I'm from Franklin, Pennsylvania, and I'm a senior in the Cross-Cultural Missions Program. Good evening. It's good to be here. My name is Joanna Troyer. I am from Salem, Ohio, and I am a senior in the Cross-Cultural Missions Program. Good evening, my name is Laura Reese. I'm from Salem, Ohio, and I'm a junior in the Cross-Cultural Missions Program. Hello, my name is Katie Reese. I'm from Salem, Ohio, and I'm a senior in the Cross-Cultural Missions Program. <laughs> from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, and who satisfieth thy mouth with good things. I will see. Oh my. 
so thankful for that amazing God that we serve. And I love the words of that song talking about um, that God still cares. He still hears and he is still mending broken hearts and drying our tears. I'm thankful for him and um, that he is our foundation and that he remains the same even though this world is um, on unstable ground. But I'm so thankful that we can run to him and we have him as our firm foundation and I love him this evening.
Well, that's certainly my heart's desire this evening, to be in the center of his will. Amen. And uh, thank you, ladies, for ministering to us this evening. And thank you all for worshiping. And uh, yes, my heart was encouraged by all the testimonies tonight. That was awesome. And uh, just seeing the children, the young people here uh, in this church, uh, Burlington Bible Church has a future. Praise God. And you guys ought to be commended for uh, your families and your young people that want to serve God. That is wonderful to see. It's not that way everywhere in the country, I'll just say that. And so you are blessed and ought to be commended for that. Thank God for that. It's been a while since I've been in your remodeled sanctuary, and I love that as well. Just a thrill to see what God's doing right here in Burlington, praise his name. Well, my name is Tom Sanders, and I'm the Director of Public Relations at AWC. And I thank you, Brother Stroud, for allowing us to be here again this year to worship with you. And we're just going to give a brief update about what some about what if, uh, some things that are going on on campus, and truly God's been good to us, and we're thankful for that. Um, I do want to mention that this fall, uh, we do have an online associate's degree that's launching in religious studies and bibl biblical studies, and if you're a high school student, uh, you can get a, a one free class a semester, and there's more information on the display back there, so keep that in mind uh, after the service tonight. One of the things we've been highlighting this summer is some of our young people have been doing some internships and some in, and exciting internships. Uh, one of our students right now, a Native American young lady by the name of Maggie Spotted Horse, is in Honduras and uh, doing her internship there and having a wonderful time. And it's just a thrill to see the young people go out and work for God and catch a vision for his work. Um, also, a couple of the young ladies that have done internships earlier this summer are, are here with us tonight. Uh, Joanna Troyer and Kaylin Hollabaugh, and I've asked them to come at this time to just share uh, a little bit about their internships and how God helped them this summer. So if they could come at this time and share, that'd be great. I took my internship this spring to Peru, South America. I went for about two weeks. It was too short and seemed to go by so fast, and I honestly did not want to come back, but someone wise, my mother, told me that my short internship to Peru was just a part, a small part of God's story for my life and an opportunity that I was grateful to be a part of. I didn't go alone, but Joanna Corbin went with me, and since she knows Spanish, she was a great help in translating for me while we were there. While in Peru, I had the opportunity of holding children's services um, in, on the two Sundays while we were there. Part of my degree is in child evangelism, so it was exciting to get to put into practice what I had been learning in the classroom with doing those two Sundays of children's services. While we were there, we held a youth weekend where surrounding churches brought in their youth. We had a good turnout of young people, and they really seemed to enjoy the activities the food, of course, and the services that were held. I had the opportunity to speak in a cultural class to the students in the Bible School Institute about Haiti. Haiti is where I was born and lived for several years while my parents um, were missionaries there. I really enjoyed telling them facts, showing them pictures, and hoping that during it they would capture a vision of missions. I got to teach English in a public school with Joanna Hardy, we taught several grades and classes um, for the, just one day. They have an English teacher, but her mother tongue is Spanish, so she wanted us to join her for that day and help the children in pronouncing the English words correctly. With having to go through a translator a lot of my time in Peru, this thought crossed my mind. I can go directly to God and do not need to go through a translator. It is wonderful to know that we have direct access to our Heavenly Father, and He hears and understands us, and that we do not need to go through someone else to communicate with Him. I'm thankful for the experiences and what God has taught me through um, my trip to Peru during my internship, and also opening my eyes to the needs right around me. I'm also thankful for the time that I got to spend there, and I can't wait to go back. I had the privilege of doing my internship under EFM at Awake Cafe in Detroit. 
Michigan. Um, the lake is located in mid Midtown, Detroit, and Midtown is just a little bit outside of downtown. And it's there surrounded by um, a thriving community as well as very close to Wayne State University. So they have a decent amount of college students that come in there as well as work there. And so it was amazing to be there and just watch the staff as they interact with the different customers. And it was amazing just to learn um, their mission and their passion to reach the community there. Um, it was fascinating to watch them as they interacted with different regulars that come into the cafe every day or weekly and as they just share their lives with them and interact with them and form relationships and then through those relationships they're able to influence them for Christ. I also had the opportunity to work with HIM's ministry Angel House which is located in Dearborn. Dearborn is the location of the highest population of Muslims in North America so they teach English two days a week there, Tuesdays and Wednesdays. And I actually had the opportunity to teach my own English class, and I didn't really feel like I knew what I was doing, but I knew English, so that was good enough. And there's about 15 to 20 um, ladies that come every Tuesday and Wednesday morning, and then they have a men's class in the evening. And it was just awesome to be there with the family that's there at Angel House and just to catch a vision of their passion and just inspiring me as they reach out to that community. It's amazing to see them be a light there in that community. In fact, one of their students just in this past year has converted from Islam to Christianity and so it was amazing to hear her testimony as she talked about how Jesus was just talking to her and her fascination with that God would even think to talk to her and it was just a, a wonderful reflection of what God can do in a life how he can change someone and I'm thankful for all the opportunities that he opened the doors for and I can't wait to see what he has in my future. Well, it's just a thrill to see the young people um, go out on these trips and come back changed, and we thank God for uh, how he's working in their lives. We praise his name for that. Uh, it's, it's truly a privilege, uh, AWC, we consider it a privilege to be part of the grand vineyard of God and his kingdom and what he's doing around this world, and thank God for our Bible schools, and uh, AWC, we consider it a privilege to be part of all that God's doing, and we're thankful for what he's doing on campus there. So the, this evening, I just remind you to continue to pray and support AWC as you think of us. You know, you've given many times when we have been here before and we're grateful for that. And pray for us as we start a new school year that God will just continue to work on our campus. And if you have questions after the service, feel free to uh, ask us and uh, visit us there at the booth. Thank you once again for allowing us to be here at this time. The ladies are coming back to minister and let's just worship the Lord. Yeah. 
before that blood this evening, and that it doesn't leave us the same, but it always, whenever we come in contact with the blood, it always does something for us, it always changes us. And I'm so thankful this evening that it does change us, that we're a different person, that when we get saved, that we don't just go back to the same sins that we used to do, but Jesus can make a complete change in our life, and I'm so thankful for that this evening. gentle stranger who took me by the hand and then I heard him whisper I heard him call my name and I knew with all my heart and soul I'd never more be the same well I won't turn back no more till I reach heaven shore my Lord is walking with me I know he's talking with me he said he'd hold my hand till I reach the promised land and I won't give up I won't turn back, but I'll keep holding on. The load that once I carried is gone forevermore. My steps that once were feeble are bound for heaven's shore. I'll keep on climbing upward till I receive my crown. Until that happy, happy day, I just won't turn around. My Lord is walking with me, I know he's talking with me. He said he'd hold my hand till I reach the promised land and I won't give up. I won't turn back, but I'll keep holding on. He'll help me cross the valleys and climb the mountain tall. He'll never let me stumble, he'll never let me fall. I mean to stay beside him till I ground I want to look to the left look to the right never more turn around well I won't turn back no more till I reach heaven shore my Lord is walking with me I know he's talking with me he said he'd hold my hand till I reach the promised land and I won't give up I won't turn back but I'll keep holding on I won't turn back, won't give up, won't turn back, but I'll keep holding on. This world with all its pleasures may call for my attention. Earth's many fleeting treasures may back on to me.
Thank you, girls, for giving us that challenge. I have made, settled it. I have made my choice and staked my claim. <laughs> Praise God. And I have. I have. And I hope you have as well. AWC played a huge role in my life, my junior year in college. Circumstances beyond my personal control uh, put me at AWC. But I, I am very, very grateful for the depth of education and commitment that I found at AWC, not the least of which was Joyce uh, Cooper, who was my teacher at AWC in my junior year. And uh, she taught me biology. So uh, ask Joyce sometime about her teaching me. <laughs> no, maybe you better not ask her. <laughs> Thank you, Brother Sanders. Thank you, girls, for ministering to us tonight. And I hope that your choice is made forever. Amen. We're going to pass the plates, and this offering will go, give you a chance to support AWC. And uh, so if the ushers will come, we will. And everything that you give tonight will be for the college. While they're coming, let me mention this. Eli sent this, uh, this text. He said, here, fellas, he said, uh, we're, we're taking open donations, but we're offering nachos, loaded nachos, root beer floats, and many baked goods. So uh, outside, outside the fellowship hall, he said, come and enjoy being young with us for the evening. <laughs> All right, so go down and support the kids, and I know... I know you'll want to do that. Lord, thank you. Thank you for the, the young ladies that have been here tonight to minister to us. Thank you for the way you used AWC over many, many years to impact the lives of people, including my own life. And I'm very, very grateful. And we pray today your special blessings upon AWC. Bless this offering and your people as they give. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.
Bible schools and pray that that will direct their lives, that will have their your right way in them to provide that direction they need. Let them know specifically from the Holy Spirit exactly what you want. And the Lord, we want your kingdom to grow. We want you to get the glory. Let's dismiss us now from this service. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen.